Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon. I'm very excited to show, with you, show you Visual BACnet today. I'm going to do a 10-minute webinar here on how to use Visual BACnet, so very high-level stuff. For starters, first thing you have to do is log in, brand new login page. Once you do that, um, if you're signing up, you may request for a free trial, you may have an account, but the very first thing you need to do is get some of your information into Visual BACnet. So there's a few different ways that you can do that. Number one, um, if you have a site monitoring account, we highly recommend this, but you can do it with any of your accounts. We have a piece of software we call the Windows Capture Tool, and you can install that on any Windows device. Typically, people put it on the main server and have it automatically capture and upload the information into Visual BACnet. So to get that, you can simply create a new site, make an example site here. Once you create that, if you go into the site, you'll see the capture tool here. You can download that and you'll be able to uh, use that on, install that on any of your window devices. All of the information on how to set it up lives in our Optigo support portal. So we have a support portal here, optigo.zendesk.com. You will need to make an account, but it's free and anyone can make an account. Simply hit sign in and you will see all kinds of information in here. And I'll mention a few of the things that you can find in here today. So you can use that, um, use the API key, use that documentation, and you can get your capture tool set up, running on your main server, and uploading your information into Visual BACnet. Another option, if you are looking to get MSTP data, we have a physical capture tool that you can uh, use our USB to RS-485 converter, wired into your MSTP network, do the exact same process, and have that information from your MSTP chain capture and go up into your Visual Backend account on a regular basis. So both of those options, the MSTP um, IP physical piece of hardware for the capture tool and the uh, Windows capture tool, you can schedule them, have them capture on a regular basis, so hourly, um, a couple times a day, it depends how you'd like to configure it, and the information will show up in your account. Another option is to capture in Wireshark. Those of you who are comfortable with Wireshark, this is a great way to do it. You can connect your computer or any uh, device that has a Wireshark on it into the network, hit capture, and capture the data. Um, the only challenge with Wireshark is you can't schedule it. Um, if you do have Wireshark, you'll end up with the file on your computer, and you'll simply need to drag and drop it into this My File screen, and it will automatically be processed and uploaded. Um, if you have are using a site, all of your data is going to upload into that site, you're going to end up with a series of files. Now, if you're in a monitored site, you're, it's going to look something like this, although hopefully there'll be a bit more data. data. Um, and it will show you the trend of the network health of your files over the last however long you've been capturing. Otherwise, you may just have a normal list of files where you've uploaded your Wireshark files. Regardless of what you have, I'm going to log into a different account here. Regardless of what you have, you can click into any of those files, and this is where we start analyzing what the problems are in your network. So for starters, we have a network health right here in the middle. Very helpful for you to get an idea of how much more time you need to spend on this file, or if it's good to go and you can send it off to uh, your customer or move on to the next activity that you need to do. If it's red, critical, don't move on. You need to spend some time. Your network is in critical condition. So the very first thing that I always do is I, when I open this is click right on that network health. This will tell you how it's calculated, so that's not just some magical number. We break it down for you. And we've put all of our diagnostic checks in order of criticality on this screen. What does this mean? Start at the top, work your way down. We are very hopeful that if you make a bunch of changes to the things at the top, fix, in this case, your duplicate device IDs, your unresponsive routers, some of the things lower down, so your unresponsive devices, your um, errors, those will likely be fixed in the process of these bigger issues being fixed. So they may be symptoms of larger problems. So we recommend fix, start at the top, fix one or two, run a new capture, and hopefully all is going well in your network. How do you fix them? Well, start at the top, click right on that, that diagnostic check. So this one is a duplicate device ID. 
here you can see all six duplicate device IDs. So, for example, device 91127 exists on both. We scroll down, we can see it's on subnet 1 and subnet 1601. You can click on that if you'd like to get the actual Wireshark frame, but realistically, you can take that and go, okay, on my um, device list, device 91127 should only be on network 1601. I need to go find the one that's configured that way on network one and change it to the appropriate device list or device ID. If you're not sure what's going on in any of these diagnostic checks, we do have a bunch of information up here, sort of the technical description of how we've gotten um, that, that information. You can also click on the uh, little VB underscore number to learn more about um, that diagnostic. And then you can go back into our support portal. So every single diagnostic check that we have has an article associated with it. So I was just looking at duplicate device IDs. If we look at duplicate device IDs, so I'll just try duplicate. Right here we have an article. It's an overview of the diagnostic check, as well as some suggestions for you on why does it normally fail and how can you fix it. So trying to take it that extra step beyond just giving you the list of device IDs. So once you've got an idea of some of the things that are going on, you may have looked at all of your diagnostic checks and realized that there's one or two specific devices that are being very problematic and you want to see what those devices are doing. Go into the BACnet browser. There's a lot of information that you can find here. You can really slice and dice the information however you want. So I recommend um, if you have a specific device that's being problematic, come and find it in your source list. It will automatically go to the next uh, button here. But say you want to see source device, uh, this one, 76.91, and then you want to see what it's saying. Uh, you can look at the PDU type or the service choice. Oh, it's doing a lot of who is, who is is. So you can kind of drill down to figure out exactly um, all the communications from each, each device. And at any point, if you want to see the actual frame information, you can get into the Wireshark frame. Another thing that I really like in here is you can look at all of the traffic on a site by vendor. So once it uploads, if you hit, up, hit vendor, you can look at in this file, we've got all these for different vendors um, Delta Controls is, has the most traffic, Honeywell the second most, so you can kind of match up and say, okay, this makes sense, these vendors should be having a lot of traffic, or, or if you want to just look at one specific vendor's traffic, you can do that. A couple best practices um, while I'm here, we recommend doing an hour-long capture if you're doing a general health check on a site. This one's about 20 minutes, you can see the duration up here. Um, Longer is the, the getting up to an hour is good. It can usually capture all of those things that happen on a regular basis. Of course, if you have a problem that happens at a specific time, capture at that specific time. Two quick last things. We do have a device browser. So all of the devices that are talking during this capture, we put them into a list. Um, and you can see that here. It's not always fully filled out because it depends on who's saying what during the capture. If a device didn't talk and no one talked to it, then it's probably not, um, not going to be in this list. We also have some reports here, so I will let you play around with those. We have a, a basic PDF, which comes with every account, as well as the advanced PDF, which you can add on to your troubleshooting account or our site monitoring account that's included for free. And that has tons of information, the device list, all of your um, diagnostic checks, everything that's causing them to fail as well as that network health. Um, finally, if you do upload a file or when you do upload a file, typically I take a quick look and look at the number of devices observed as well as the networks observed. If you find that it doesn't match up at all with the number on your site, you may be capturing in the long loca location, in which case try and figure out what's going on or contact us and we can help you figure out exactly where you should be capturing. You can always contact us through the chat here. You can also email us support at optigo.net. Or if you have an optical contact, please reach out to us. Thank you so much. That's a very quick 10-minute overview of Visual Backnet. Of course, I'm, ha I'm happy to take questions. And we are always happy to set up demos and give you a more in-depth view 
especially when we're looking at your files. So please let us help you with Visual Backnet. Thanks again and have a good rest of your day.